Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe. So I remember when we were driving, driving in your car. Speed so fast, it felt like I was drunk. City lights lay out before us, and your arm felt nice wrapped around my shoulder. And I, I had a feeling that I belonged. I, I had a feeling I could be hey, babe. Be hey, babe. Be hey, babe. What's up, babe? Dun, dun, dun. Where is she? Tracy Chapman? Yeah, right now. Open the door. Where? Get the... Tracy Chapman. Where is she right Tracy Chapman's, now? Tracy Chapman's in my bed tonight. Allegedly. Allegedly. I love Tracy Woo. Chapman. Tracy Chapman, if you're listening and we know that you are, yes. just know that we like you, we support you, we know Luke Bryan stole your song, and if we find Luke Bryan, we're going to beat the shit out of him unless you paid him. On sight. On sight. Unless you paid him to uh, license that song. Yes. So so where is she right now? Is she still doing her thing? Is Tracy Chapman still tour? Because if so, I'd like to get tickies. Tour? No, that doesn't mean she's touring. Hey, click on that. It said she will tour again. Will tour again. Uh, no, unfortunately she's not. I haven't retired yet. However, at the moment there are no plans for a tour. I think it's nice being not being on tour these days. It does take something away from everyday life, oh, and I just right. appreciate being home. Damn right. But Good that for was you, Tracy. That was that, in 2015, that was eight my years ago. Yeah. So where is she right now? Like I, and I don't just mean is she touring. I mean where is she right now? Google where does Tracy Chapman like, live if you get a chance. Oh, she at, no, but I mean what's <laughs> she doing? Let's send a hey babe. Let's send a Kane Tanaka shirt to her house. Wait, is she is she at the store? Is she like on the bowl? Yeah, you know, is she is she cooking? Is she? Uh, you Let's know. every episode try to find out where in the world is Tracy Chapman. Where in the, the world, world is Tracy Chapman? Chapman? She she has not released any original music in fifteen years. Well, good for you because Can I can't she? wait to do that. Let me ask you a question. Name a second song by Tracy Chapman. Uh, fast car and uh, uh, baby, can I hold you? Tonight, in the right place, in the right time, you be mine. Yeah, fast car. Yeah, go fast car, and then baby, baby, can I hold you? Really? Yeah. Are you making it up? No. Look, yeah, I have. I actually have it. I have it on my Spotify. How do you know that? Look, yeah, look. I How do you know that? Look, yeah, baby, can I hold you? Because I look. Look, look at these two songs. Baby, can I hold you fast car? All but my Spotify like songs. Did you make that playlist or is that a curated playlist that you just followed? No, I make my own playlist. Oh, you do? Bitch. Oh, so you added that? Yeah, I like How do you know about my that brain. song? My play what I listen I listen to back to back. I listen to Tracy Chapman and Morgan Wallace. Morgan Wallen back to back. I love it. Wow. That's what I do, back to back. For the people. I think she has the most covered song of all time. Every country fast artist car? has borrowed fast car. Does she get paid she, for that? That's I hope so. That one hit, right? That's all she needed for life. Google Tracy Chapman. That's why we should be we should be musicians because if you're a musician, and especially a solo act, right? Maybe not a band that has a one hit. She's not really a one hit wonder. I think she's pretty steeped in it, but whatever. But like, if you have a song like that, that is just right, that just transcends everything, right? You, if she's on the licensing of that, that's a done deal. That's done Done deal. deal. She's gonna make the money in perpetuities. That's right. Right. They and have to license the, the covers. Tracy Chapman hasn't had any original music since 2008. I haven't had original comedy since 2013. <laughs> I've just been stealing bits. But it's not the same. Here's the thing. <laughs> isn't it more fun to be... Like, isn't it better to be a musician to make, your, to make your bones? Because, look, you get one song, you tore off that, you get residuals off that, if you own it for the rest of your life, and if it's a hit like that... I mean, I know it's a one in a million shot, but number two, you go to the concert, and they want to hear... The songs they know. They're mad if they don't. Don't hear it. Where so you don't have to be like, well, if she's coming through, I it better be new music. Yeah. It's like if she's coming through, it better be the old music. It better not be new music. Right. That's the thing. I want to hear the old stuff. Where with comedy, we are the exact opposite. Exactly. If you hear the bit that I did on the special, if I did it at the show, you're going to be disappointed. And there's no one joke that's going to that's going to set us up for life. Even Bert Kreischer, the well, Bert Kreischer, the machine. I His think special is, set him up for life. Yeah. That that's that they, he could, but that, but even that that's 20 minutes you still have to give them another 50 minutes of new stuff yeah but that like you get a jump off like that and you get that core audience and they follow you and that's right, 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 right. but no but i'm saying that's tracy i wonder what she's worth tracy chapman network please tracy but chapman i network. was gonna say now that all the musicians have to perform for tiktok it has to go viral on tiktok or you'll never get found that's is that what it right is. same yeah. with comedy too all the comedians who have blown up it's because their bits went viral on tiktok but it's also they have to hire robots 
to get plays on Spotify to get on the trending list. There's like a whole thing. It kind of sucks. It's not. It's not fun. It's anymore. not organic anymore. It's not. It's. You have to have. The science behind it. You have to hire someone who knows now how to put these clips up yes. to beat the system and to, to get into the algorithms. It's a, it's it's completely beyond fun and beyond what it should be. It's not like let me upload something. I have a I have a social media account. Let me upload something to my social media account and hopefully people will find it. If you're not paying someone to to do yep. like the behind the scenes, I have a question. What was the curse? That cursed. What was the first Rocket vi money. viral video you remember like watching on the new internet when it was new um, to you? Shoes, YouTube. I have some shoes. Let's get some shoes. Really? And get some shoes. Okay. That uh, was the first viral like video. 20 years ago -ish? Shoes. Just put shoes YouTube. Let's get some shoes. Go yeah, this one. Let's get some. You ever seen this? I don't know. Can we play it? Oh, wait. Is that, real is that not a girl? Is it a guy in drag? With the help of Squarespace. Oh, yeah. This was one before drag was. Yeah, this, this is. I remember watching this. At my friend who went to Mount St. Uh, Vincent's College, and we were watching in their dorm room, dying laughing at this. Wait, how long is this? 16 years ago. This is it's the original four one. Four minutes though. long. Yeah. This is this went viral. This was viral. Oh I saw, yes, yes. You remember this now? Yes. Yeah, shoes. Yeah. Shoes. Wow, I don't. I don't remember this. See, because this is before you. This is before you. Other something. Other was viral for you. What was the first viral thing for you? What if you throw in what's some of the first viral videos? What does it pull up? I think let's get I some think there's been a few, a few of them. If you pull them up, I'll remember them. Oh, I love this guy. Star Wars. I've never Star seen Wars this one. Oh, you. It's so hot in here, isn't it? It is hot in here. You ever seen Star oh, Wars, the kid? Dancing baby. Yeah, they had it on Arrested Development. Star Wars Kid is amazing. You're, I've never seen Star Wars Kid. Can, can we watch it? Yeah, yeah. A ridge. I've never seen well, Star let's, Wars Kid. Let's Kit. actually scan these. This yeah. might be fun. Star Wars Kid, it's nice and short. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, it's not over yet. And you saw this in 2003. Watch. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, find the video they did. Somebody CGI'd him, all the guns, laser guns coming in, and he's actually defending himself. It's the best. It's it's amazing, and they put the music in the background. It looks insane. Star I want to put my face on that and make it a tour now. No, you gotta put kid in there though, because I think she's just talking uh -oh. about the movie. I don't know if it's CGI, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 this guy, this kid is like now 40 and he's somewhere. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a genius now. Yeah. <laughs> what is what? And was it an audition or he was just I filming himself? I think he was probably like in school. I like at the, like uh, to me it looks like the, he's in the TV like audio video club at school yeah, yeah, and he's just, and just <laughs> play, or like he put it on like uh like like a uh, local access cable or some shit the dancing baby I vaguely remember so we could it's skip just dances like right, yeah that I see that was Ali McBeal right I don't was I don't, it I don't even know I how you know Ali McBeal Dan Her Hertz never saw that. rejected two thousand never saw that oh, Numa you. Numa I never seen that you ever seen that I don't I don't think so the end of the know. world two thousand three never saw that. All your base are belong to us. No, I've never seen these. Badger, Badger. I've never seen any of these. No, I don't the know. The Llama Song. I remember that. Peanut Butter Jelly Time, I know. We Like the Moon. No, I don't know. No, I don't know I've never seen any of these. Interesting. Yeah, I've never, I've never, um, I did not even get a computer in my house. Like a computer in my household yeah. till I was in college. Same. So like AOL and all that. Same. I never. I missed all of that. I didn't oh, wait, do any I'm of that. I'm like six or eight years older than you. That's what I'm saying. So so you. I. Ninety eight. I, I had. We had our first Acer. Yeah, Aspire. I didn't get a computer till about two thousand four. Like okay. I, I did not send my first. I swear to Christ, I did not send an email. Yeah. I did not send an actual email to anyone until two thousand and nine. Was the very first time I emailed anyone for any wow, reason. Wow, that's late. What in comedy? Mine was like mine was like ninety nine. Yeah, we got we got a desktop that was in the living room that the whole family had to use in shifts. 
Right. And it was dial up. Right. And I remember when I was in college, they started talking about, oh, you can get an, a college email assigned to you, like St. John's.edu. That's how you got a Facebook a, 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 initially. Initially, yeah. You could only have a college. I wasn't in that. But but so then I was like, my friend's like, oh, did you get an email address? I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, they'll give you like your name at St. John's, and then you could come in and you could check the mail. And I was like, what do you mean check mail? He's like, well, other people can write to you from theirs. And I was like, well, for what reason? And yeah. he's like, well, just watch. And his girlfriend he used to date had an, had one. And so when we were in the computer lab, he go every time we went to computer lab class, he would sign in, and then sign in and show me that he got an email, just one email from his girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. That just and it was like just bullshit, like just like you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, what the f is the point of this? Right. I just cursed. Rocket money. Um. And I was just, I just couldn't really. So I was like, I don't need one. And then it just wasn't until a couple until AOL when people started going in like the chat rooms and shit. Right. Like yeah, I never AFL. did that. I never did a chat room. I never did like a chat roulette. I just missed. I was very always. I was the guy from the beginning. I always never wanted to be in technology. I I got a Facebook only when I started comedy. I became a physical therapist because I was like, I want to do something that I, you don't have to know computers for. I was very anti-computer, anti-digital for some reason. Well, now. And I, well, now, but we've had to. You're no, but I think I'm, I'm going, I, I, exactly. I think what's happened is I went back to my roots now where I've said to myself, you know what? Even like, I think we were talking either off air or in the beginning of this episode of the end of Santino's about how now you need people to run your socials and there's an algorithm and then this and that. My brain automatically, and I don't know that it's a, it's a fear of, um, or like I'm just exhausted by it. I don't even want to try to tackle it. It's that I genuinely have no passion or interest in, I'd rather make less money and go less far than just, I'd rather go back to physical therapy than, than have to get sucked into that. I really I would. Because I, I just don't, I have zero zero, zero um, want to even want to know how to learn. Like, like things that I get passionate about, you know, they've been saying, they've been saying from the beginning, follow your passions, babe. Yeah. Follow your passions. Whatever you're passionate about. So like, I've lately been reading books about things that I just want to be passionate about. And I think, you know, if you try to force yourself to learn something you don't really care about, it's never going to come out the right way, babe. So that's why I've been learning about Roth IRAs. Have you? Well, I've been learning. I've been. I've been really taking a a, a, di a deep dive into finance. I got this book called "Left Brain Finance" of uh, right brain finance for left brain people. Or okay, like it's like a creative. It's like a, it's like a it's like a book that's written to explain finance to uh, like a creative type. That's actually a great book. What yeah. they say about Bitcoin? This I got this book twenty years ago, but I still, oh. I still have it. And you haven't read one page. I, fl I thumbed it. Thumbed it. Yeah. So here, let me tell you what I've been doing. Yeah. Let me tell you what I've been doing, okay? As as a little, um, anybody who's, um, who's parents out there, even if you're not a parent, anybody who just feels like they can't get their work done, what I've been doing, and, and it's something, I did not create this. This is something that I learned from, shout out my man Ryan Holiday from The Daily Stoic. He sent a, the Daily Dad book here for me. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a fan of the pod. Uh, you know, he's a fan of you. Sal, Ryan Holiday of The Daily Stoic Podcast. It's a podcast I listen to every day. Thank I read you. his books. Uh, you listen to the pod every day. Is it bite-sized? Bite-sized, which I think is the way to go. Right. For when I see 12 minutes, yeah. I'm in. I'm in. When I see two hours and 15 minutes, I'm out. That's why I can't like it's, it's, it. It's, it's I don't know how people watch. Like, isn't Rogan three hours? It's overwhelming how for me. Do it. I think and write, write, email us I guess they listen to at the what about bite sized hey babes? What are you guys thinking about 12 minute episodes? We put them out every day. That looks like an old Shane Gillis right there. That does. <laughs> that does. Uh, unacceptable. Um, Ocean Gate it rides a rips US. Yes, okay. this, this is about the, the thing. Okay. The but so, bite sized hey babes, let us know what you think about it. Write it in the community board, YouTube us, hey babe pod at gmail.com. What bite sized hey babes, that might be the way. Here we go. But what I've been doing, what what I've been doing, it, no, re that was a funny headline. It said, "No regrets." I divorced my husband while he wallowed in pity and he killed died. my vibe. <laughs> <laughs> he's dying of a disease, and this woman said, "I'm divorcing him because he's he's wallowing in self pity and he's killing her vibe." <laughs> Get it, girl? <laughs> Work it. That's like you know when they when you go to when you go sit down for like arbitration and they're like, "What are you filing for?" Is it like mutual? You know, they say oh, mutual, irreconcilable differences. She's like, "No." He killed my vibe. He killed my vibe. <laughs> Mitch Duncan. So what I've been doing, and this is why I shouted out Ryan Holiday and this Daily Stoic book and, and the one that I'm reading, The Daily Dad, but you can do it with all his books. They're designed for this, I believe. 
is the daily dad is one piece of parenting advice a day. So whatever the date is, you go and wherever you buy the book, you start at that date and then it's 365 lessons, right? And so I wake up every day at 5 a.m. because my kids, the, the baby wakes up at 5.45. So, so, so no matter what, you know you're waking up at 5.45. Like that's, that is what the- time you go down? It depends. Like tonight, tonight, you know, I got spots, so I won't go down till you know, 12, 12.30. But last night, didn't have spots. 9 p.m. passed out in the got middle it. of a Woody Allen movie. Okay. And, and so, so passed out. So I still do get my... You're, you're up at 5.45 when you get home at 12.30, one? Uh, if you have to, you have to, yeah. you know. But so, so I, I try to, to limit that. But you know how our careers are. If we got late shows, we got late shows. Nothing I can do, babe. Got to put, I got to put food on the table. Right. Okay? Even though DoorDash can put food on the table. And if you go ahead and use that promo code, hey, babe, you get a nice discount. Yeah. Okay? And that they'll bring you that food or you can make your own food. That's HelloFresh. It's America's number one meal kit. So we got other places to put food on the table. They can act like your kids' daddies. So, but what I do is I wake up now. I set my alarm for 4.50. Okay? Wake up. Wash my face, brush my teeth quick. I go down at five. I've been delaying having coffee. I have a big gulp of water, big sip of water. Well, now you're getting up early. Now you you're making your window bigger that you can't eat when you're awake. Well, that yes, that. But I don't, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm thinking about I drink my big gulp of water, get the systems flowing. And Andrew Huberman, the great neuroscientist, you've heard, probably seen him all over, right? Andrew Huberman. Doesn't You've seen him. He's been on day. Rogan. He's he's everywhere lately. Oh, Huberman. Right. He's like, and and so what he says, and I don't. I, I think it's adenosine. It's a it's a chemical that if you drink coffee too early, then you kind of don't let your body's like natural stimulants work. It kind of suppresses them. So I delay my coffee about an hour and a half. It's difficult, but I do it. But what I but the reason why I'm getting to this is because what I've been doing, what I've said to myself, and I've been doing this for the last three weeks is I read one that Daily Dad page just mm -hmm. to get the flow going into reading. And then I read, I try, I say, you're going to read 10 pages of whatever book you've wanted to read. So the book that I'm eating right now is, uh, is uh, it's called uh, The Simple Path to, Simple Journey to Wealth or Simple Path like, to Wealth. It's like portion control yes. for reading. But what winds up happening is because I say the first, the, for me, my buzzer, my alarm is the first cry from the baby saying mommy daddy then i know close the book your time is done now I, it's typically 5 45 once in a while it's 5 20 once in a while it's 6 30 so i say the minimum is 10 pages i try to get 10 pages unless you know she wakes up early but typically it's closer to 20 pages sometimes 30 pages and i am flying through books this way because you'll read I'll read 500 pages sometimes. Consistently, though. Because it's consistent. Because that's all I'm doing is rather than trying to read w one whole book on a plane ride. But are I, you digesting 10 pages at a time? Yes, because I'm reading it. I'm taking notes, underlining stuff. And then what I typically do. Listen, Rocket Money. I use it. I like it. It saves me money. It goes and you cancels all the unwanted subscriptions that you forgot about. It's literally awesome and it alerts you to a change in your spending habits or subscriptions that, you know, that it looks out for you. I, I genuinely have it. It tells me each month where my spending is based on last month, if I'm above or below, and it's an awesome tool. The thing I like about it is how easy it is because if you are going to cancel subscriptions or try to, you know, uh, track your budget and spending on other apps, you got to do them one by one. Yeah. I don't, and it, it, you look at it and you're like, all right, let me try it. I couldn't believe it. You just put in your email address. That's it. Whatever email address you have, you put it in or your number, and it goes and it searches and aggregates yes. all the places that you have yes. subscriptions, and then you hit one button to cancel. It's the most genius thing. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person $720 a year, and right now, all you got to do is go to rocketmoney.com slash hey babe. That's rocketmoney.com slash hey babe. Manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash hey babe. Stop throwing your money away and cancel these unwanted subscriptions. Babe, guess what? I got a brand new hour of stand up material. I'm going to be doing the special in Atlanta in December. Those tickets are on sale soon, but come see it before I film it. We got the Borgata in August. We got Radio City sold out in New York, so we added the theater at MSG September 23rd. Still some tickets available for that. We've announced Irvine, California, Portland, Seattle, Las Vegas, Omaha, Nebraska, Kansas City, Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri, Hammond, Indiana, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Columbus, New Haven, Connecticut, Providence, Salt Lake City. We're coming to you, baby, with more being added soon. ChrisDComedy.com for Tiki Wikis. I hope you guys are going to really like this hour. I think it's my best work. Come see it. We have a good time in the front row. If you buy tickets for the front row, I'll give you a kiss on the lips and a bag of my pubes. Hello, guys, and I just want to give you some dates right now. The very last weekend of the Joker's tour, for now, 
the first leg, is happening July 27th, uh, 28th, and 29th. We're at Nashville at the Grand Ole Opry, Gamebridge Fieldhouse uh, in Indianapolis, and the Stifle Theater for two shows on the 29th in St. Louis. Those are available at impracticaljokerslive.com. Come the new year, we will be adding the second leg of this tour. So if you didn't see us yet, don't fret. Uh, other than that, the reason we are shifting is because I am going back on the second leg of my solo tour, and I am filming a special in December at the Vic Theater in Chicago. Chicago and Chicago's surrounding greater metropolitan area. I chose you. Come out and support your boy. Um, leading up to that, I will be at the Hartford Funny Bone in August. I will be at the Syracuse Funny Bone in September. I will be at the, there was another funny bone in there, and I don't remember, uh, Albany, the Albany funny bone in August as well. And then we're doing Bowling Green, Kentucky, Cincinnati, Ohio, Toledo, uh, Wilkes Bar, Bear, I never know, guys, I'm sorry, in Pennsylvania, Wilmington, Delaware, uh, Macon, Georgia, Savannah, Georgia, Athens, Georgia, Peoria, Illinois, Rockford, Illinois, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Springfield, Illinois, and then I'm doing a very special one-night warm-up show right before the special in Elkhart, Indiana, at the Lerner Theater. Those tickets, if not yet, are going to be on sale very soon at SavileCanoComedy.com. Pay attention to my socials because I'm going to tweet all the uh, pre-sale stuff to get the best tickets first. Uh, that's pretty much it. Check out my merch and check out the podcast merch. Go to SavileCanoComedy.com. Uh, Jokers are starting up again. Season 10, the second half of that, Thursday nights at 10 on TBS and True TV. I love you. I will see you on the road. I'm very excited. What I typically do is... The stuff that I underline the day that, you know, I underline the next day, I go back before I start reading the, 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 the 10 more pages. Yeah. I read just the underline stuff, the stuff I made the notes. I don't read it all, just the stuff that I deemed important. And then I start the new path. So and I give it another pass. Yeah. And I've been realizing like that has set me up for like a good, a, a really, really good kind of day where I feel accomplished right away and then you know hit the gym or whatever else i can do but but i but i'm also been very forgiving of myself lately where if i john steinbeck has a quote he said oh now that you know you can't be perfect go be great so meaning like there's been a lot of times where i would i can't I, believe you just wrote up john steinbeck i was literally about to say the last book i met, read was of mice and men in 1989 john steinbeck east yeah. of eden but that's so, not true so so stop the but, pearl I, I don't uh know. I, don't know. I think the other one is um I don't know. I either. forgot. I don't know. So, but anyway, so I've been doing that and I've been noticing that like when you're a bit more forgiving on yourself, like there's been a couple of days where like I want to really hit the gym hard or whatever, but I don't, my body hurts and I just stretch, just stretch. And I stretch. feel so much better. I'm at, I'm at a point in my life, my body and my mind is at a point of now where I think I've gotten old enough where I'm kind of just accept like fully from a, from a, uh, nature level just accepted I am who I am and I'm just like I'm gonna truly trust my gut and follow my passions and just try if I don't want to do it I'm just not gonna do it kind of thing mm -hmm. and go only trying to follow what I want to do and again it's only been two three weeks but I it's been really beneficial oh and another big thing immediately if if, if you don't have a backyard go outside if, if you can I get sunlight, even if it's cloudy. Sunlight mm. in my eyes, the first five minutes of me waking up, five, ten minutes, I get on, I walk around my yard, or sometimes I walk down the block, because they, uh, Andrew Uberman said, sunlight on the face just kicks in your body's natural yeah. abilities that we suppress a lot by staying inside, by drinking coffee too much. So it's not even like... Um, you're doing anything extraordinary. You're doing what your body's designed to do. So, yeah. and I've had a, re and oh, I've been taking cold showers too. Not the whole time, just the last 10 seconds. That's all I could stomach right now is I've been turning it's it fully, to cold. Fully cold. As cold as I can. And I just take 10 breaths through it, but it, it hurts. But my friend was like, listen, 10 breaths is going to turn into 15 breaths in the course of a week. And then before you know it, in the course of a six gonna, months, you're just going to be breathing through the whole cold shower. You're going to be, I could go in the Titanic right now and get them. No. Uh, 100%. Could you do that? I could do that if, if they're taking so, up cold so showers. what happens? You get out and you're like a little bit like, have you ever brushed your skin? No. Okay. Oh, because well you got dead uh, skin cells. Yeah, but you're also stimulating the circulation. So a uh, uh, buddy that I used to work with gave me a Christmas I gift. I stimulate my circulation another way. Well, yeah, it's a different way. Okay, you do. It's basically a, 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 like a brush, a body brush on the end of a stick, but it also comes off so you can hold it in your hand. Okay. And you just sweep up. All toward your heart on your whole body. So this way's down, this way's up. You do your legs, your arms, dude. 
It takes off dead cells, but it stimulates your body. Your body tingles, and you literally feel an immediate rush from it. What about if we do this? We do a live Hey Babe. We take off our dead skin cells. People in the front row get this, get a little bag. When you buy a ticket, you get a little bag of our skin. What do you think of that I as a nice you, incentive? It I costs five dollars more to sit in the front row, but the price of that is you get a little, like a dime bag that you would sell weed in of yeah. our skin. Yeah, it's like our version of selling the jarred farts. <laughs> yes. What do you think of that I, as I, a live? Hey, babe, it if takes the front nothing row, for let us. us know. Write in the comments. Let us know if you'd be willing to pay for little bags of our dead skin. Yeah. For the front row of a I show. I would do it. I would do it. I would. Sc- I want you to do this because if you're really taking cold showers, I do. It, you do it before the shower, I think. But I usually end up doing it after the shower. Okay. But I does I'm it defeat telling, the perp? I don't know. All I know is that I, don't know. I, feel I know the technology invigorated. I thought you were going to say invincible. No, well, that a little bit, but like I, I, I haven't done it in a while. I should do it again. I, I forgot about it. Do you she take a cold shower? You can't. You, you've told me many times you can't get in a pool unless it's heated. You've, I've heard you say that multiple times. Well, I spent my whole life getting into freezing cold pools, and now that they invented the heating system, I really try and steer clear of cold pools. If you ever had a pool in your house, you best you bet your ass it's heated. It's going to be uh, at least a, 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 it'll never go below eighty five. It'll probably live at around eighty eight. Would you would you be the guy that keeps the heated pool on in the winter? If would I you could, keep the pool twelve months? If I could do that, I would. It, I mean, you know, not all of us have DJ Khaled's money. He does make money. But I would love to have a heated pool all year round. I got to be honest with you though, as a guy who now has a house with a pool. Yeah. I'm realizing very quickly, I'm not a house guy. I'm not a pool guy. My family are not house people, and we're not pool people. <laughs> what? Uh, we're, I, 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 I thought you've been loving the house and loving the pool. Listen, I'm I'm happy to be where I'm at. I'm happy to have stability. Sure. I'm happy for my kids to have structure. When you say you're not a pool guy, it's like you don't you don't you don't you don't utilize it. We don't utilize it. It's a lot to maintain. Even though I have a great pool guy, shout out Jim, the pool guy, good guy. Your kids Jim, aren't doing uh, can point. openers and that shit. They all are, they are. But I've, but what I think would be better is if we, because we have, because when you have it there, you tend to not use it so much. You know, the kids don't go in the pool that much. This is the guy that has their clothes on their treadmill, whatever, because it just becomes, it's right there, and you don't, and you don't do it. Sure. What I think would be better is if we had days where we took the children to the pool. It's like having a birthday party or a party at your house is so much more difficult than going to a place to have the party. You, all you do is go there, do the party, they clean everything up, you come home. That's what I'm thinking with the pool. It's like when the pool's at my house, then the party's at my house, the cleanup's at my house, the dirty towels are at my house, the wet floors are at my house, you know, the, all these ho- this, this house I have to maintain is at my house. I'm maintaining my own house at my house. <laughs> and, and, and I don't want to do that. I, I'm, in a part, I'm an apartment guy. I am in a, I'm a guy who wants to have an apartment. Yeah, I mean, and I, I know, want I my know. children to be in the apartment with me and Jasmine to be in the apartment with me. And Jasmine was very anti this. But she is now slowly, and I've asked her, I've asked her. Wait, did you flip again? You flipped now to- Let's anti- flip this house. You flipped to anti-house again? I flipped to anti-house again. No, you didn't. It, it's so- No, you didn't. Wait, wait. You were house. And then you said to me- I was a big house guy. Yeah, and then you said to me, I need to go back to where I open my door and it's right in front of me. I, I need, yeah. I, I, I need to, I can't be in a place like this. Yes. And then you came back to then me. Then I came back. It was only a couple of weeks ago. Right. And you said, I don't know what I was talking about. I thought about it more. I completely am back on board with, in my house and where I right. live and where I went. And now are you telling me now that you are now second guessing keeping the house I'm again? telling you that I'm actively looking for apartments in Tribeca. No, you're not. Swear to God. Swear to God. I'll Swear. show you right now. Uh, Wait, but what happened from the last time I spoke to you that you Jasmine, said you've come around and that you do appreciate living in the house in a, in a suburban neighborhood? I started reeling Daily Stoic, and I'm I'm following I'm following my energy. I'm following my passions, and the kids and the kids. But that's a that's a double flip. That's a that's a I I might house, flip two more times, but by next week. Okay. So do you feel you're going to move to an apartment in the city? I'm thinking it's on the table. Tribex. Not Tribeca, but I was kidding about that. But I got to tell you, I just looked at apartments in Brooklyn and What Manhattan. are you thinking? Tell me. I think that Do they have pools? the square footage for what you're going to get for your money is just not worth but it. But I'm not about... But see, here's the thing. I, the square footage is not what I'm paying for anymore. It used to be that's what my value was. How much feet am I getting for the money? For me now, the money is not attached to the square footage. It's attached to the location of where it is. Both should be true. But I'm just saying you have true. a family of five. 
Right. So you're going to need at least a certain amount of square footage. Right. So you have to shop from that square footage up, no matter what it is. Oh, yeah. A 2,000. if it's modest. A 2,000 square foot, even 2,000 square feet is relatively small for a family of five. Right. That, in the city, you're talking astronomical. Yeah. I mean, I went to buildings that they maxed out. Nice newer buildings, even they they max out at like twenty three hundred square feet. Max out, and you're talking millions of dollars for these yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, it, it it might be a pipe dream. It yeah. might be a. No, I mean you could do it. I'm just saying, like you're gonna pay. I just found that it was a good exercise for me to go look at these apartments. I did it for a couple of days. I went to like six, seven places, and I was like, now my money's gonna go further. Like if I could just put it into like. A home instead of an apartment, no, or at least in the city. Because the reason I want to come here, same thing you want. I want the energy. I want the access. Right. I want the location. Right. You're starting to feel low energy on Staten Island. Yeah, I, I want the location, but then even thinking, where you live. No, I mean I'm alright. I'm never on Staten Island. I'm never there. But are you are you the guy? Are you comfortable in the place where you live now? That you could stay there for 20 years. Like, you, you don't need change. No, I don't think I, I like my place now, but I don't think I could stay there for 20 years. I think I'm growing out of it. And I think I need a bigger. You're place. kind of over it. Yeah, I, I want my house. I, I apartment life. It's, I've done my whole life. I'm in my 40s. You know, like I want the oasis now. Right now, I want my, my. I want a yard, and I want it to be like my own literal. Oh, like you know, I want it to be. I don't see other. I just want to be in a wall of green and private and quiet. You know, I want that. But I want do the you, opposite. But does that do you? So you want to open up your front door and have nobody around you? You uh, want to drive like, to the? You, no, not you don't, like I'm on acres, acres and acres and but, acres. But acres you don't something. mind driving to the bagel store? You nah, don't mind that? I will. You don't mind that you don't have that you can't I walk. I love out the door, but I will sacrifice. I never had my own yard. I never had my own pool. Nothing. I never had a pool. Nothing. I just want that. See, I'm thinking no. I understand because I never had it either. And I and again. There are certain guys or people that are house people. They they love this. I'm the person. I don't know what it'll be when like I look the at house. the pool, yeah. what I see is just liabilities. Yeah, what is I that see right? is what I see is my it. kids can have an accident there. Their friends can have accidents there. I have to clean this. I have to maintain this. I have to pay for this. I have to close it. I have to open it. I don't want it near me. I want to go to it. For three hours and then leave it. Wow. So you have the pool. You've attained it. Yes. And now you're like, eh, I could do without it. And it's not a thing like. Uh, but when you say I have to close it, I have to open it, I have to clean it. You don't do that. No, I'm paying to do that. So you're saying I don't want to even pay to do that. I don't even like my house with all the, the, the you know, the, there's four bedrooms there. It's like I don't. It's too much space. Like it's, it's just things to collect. It's things to get dirty. Mm. It's things to maintain. I'm like I'd rather Minimalist. live a lot more minimal. I'd rather live so much more minimal. Yeah. So and I think I understand what you're saying that you got a family of five, so you need a certain amount of square footage. But I think the children would adjust. We would take the children out more. We'd take them to the park. We'd get them walking. We'd get them. Even with me, I have a whole. You know, I have a swing set for the kids in the back and a pool for them. And it's beautiful to have three children. It's beautiful that they play with each other, but they only ever really play with each other. Yeah. They have play dates where when I took them to the park, I took them to the park on Staten Island yeah. for Father's Day uh, a couple of weeks ago. We went to a park in Great Kills. Um, it was awesome. It was like a it was like a marine animals inspired park. It's like a big shark face. It's did like you, did you go to the? It was did, on the water. It's like go, right by the Marina Gateway, Cafe. Gateway National Park is where you went. You went to Gateway. No, I don't think it was. I know no, Gateway. I know Gateway. It's the marina. It, no, but it was on the other side. Wolf's Pond Park. No, um, no, it was a. Uh, it was a. It was a. Uh, yeah, let me see. I might. I might have it in my thing. It was a. Um, it was a marine, like marine life, marine life park. Um, I don't know. I love a good marina though. Seaside wildlife. Seaside wildlife nature park. Tennyson Drive, Staten Island. I've never heard of that in my yeah, life. Yeah, it was down a back street. It was awesome. How did you find it? I googled top ten parks in Staten Island. Really, and, and that, that was number one. That, that was number that. two, and and so. But what happened on was on the playground, they're going wild. The kids, they were with fifty other kids, and right. they had so much fun. But they get that at school, right? They do, but I want them. I want them to always have a better life than me. That's what you know. I, I think. So you don't think you could drive them to the park? You'd rather have. I can, but but you do it less because if they have swings outside, they wind up on their right. tablets. You know, it's very difficult for me to get my ten thousand steps a day. I can't do it. Yeah. I got to walk back and forth in front of the house like my father. <laughs> yeah. And and then I keep setting off the motion sensor light. I don't want to do it. I'd okay. rather I'm not saying the city. The city might be bold, but you know, a neighborhood where like we're just out in the it's it's a thing when you're living there, 
Because even where you live, it's like you still got community and all that. But like where I live, and I have a great community. I have wonderful, wonderful neighbors. But you are just kind of up there. You're kind of just on right, a hill. So, so the pendulum has swung back in the other direction. Yes, and I so don't. So Staten Island may lose you. Maybe the, the part of Staten Island I'm in. Okay. If I could go to a, like I'd rather go to a place where, you know, you could, um, like off Forest Avenue yeah. over there, you can you got those beautiful houses, you can walk yeah, to the store. Yeah. Just go get in the flow of shit and yeah. get lost. Yeah. With me, I'm like, I can walk through beautiful, the beautiful mansions and all that that you see. You know, if you walk down a few blocks, you see these really beautiful houses. That's nice, but it's like you see, there's no flow there. It's the yeah. same thing where people change. Right, the houses right. always look the same, but if I'm walking down the block, yeah. I'm going to see different people all the right, time. And now yeah. I'm making now I'm yeah. making the same block look way different because there's different energy from the people. Yeah, and I want to get my ten thousand steps a day, yeah. and I can't get it. Yeah, it's all about ten thousand steps a day. Yeah, I, I, Seneca, the great Stoic philosopher Seneca said the greatest. T you go for walks. Walks is what clears the mind. Going for walks. I, I don't even have sidewalks, Ryan. I can't go for a walk. I get hit by a car or a deer. Oh, I don't like on. it. Babe, relax. You Seneca can, would say to relax. You will the dichotomy of control. Home. You'll find a sidewalk. I've been going for a uh, walk every single morning now at 9 a.m. for the last four or five months. Every day, seven a week. Yeah, well, if I'm home. So you set the alarm at 9 a.m. and you go for the no, walk? No, I'm up at seven. Okay. And then, like, at nine, I just go. You go? Yeah. Any direction? Any, any. I have the same route. Is it with the flow? Just you're going with the flow. I, I just go with the way. I just I have a whole route. I go and I go back and I go back and I I go anywhere from two to six or eight reps back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I have the steps too. So that's why we you, you get ten thousand a day. I rarely get ten thousand, but that's because I rarely am not working. You right. know what I mean? If I'm off, off, I can get the ten. I get ten, twelve. Like today. I am now planning my, my walks. Like today, we're going to finish Hey Babe, and then I have some stuff to do. Yeah. So I'm just going to walk. I'm just going to walk around the city. I like it. Let me see what my steps are today. My steps today Where are you at? 40, 5, 1, 1, 1, 1. 5, 11. 5, 1, 11. So, five th so you're already halfway to 10,000. Yeah. Because you, wa you walked. I walked this morning. Because you walked off the... I the walked this morning, and then I walked uh, here from the boat. And you did your 9 a.m. walk. Yeah. There you go. So you're already but halfway only there. At five one one one. Yeah, but you still got. You're going to the cure tonight. You're yeah. going to the concert. You're going to get ten thousand today. Okay. You might get ten thousand. You do laps around the arena. I will say though, I love I love the walk so much that I like look forward to it every day, and I don't want to miss it. Do, and like you, when it rains, is like such a bummer. But you do it anyway. Um, I've done drizzle. Right. But can you get yourself walk? a nice umbrella? I love a good umbrella. Oh, I love a good umbrella. You know, one you, that is not flimsy and that will open up and give you enough coverage, and you know it's always going to be there for you. No, let me tell you something about you. Not yeah. only do you love a good umbrella, you have the best rain gear. You got yellow like rubber ducky jackets. Yeah. You have rubber rain boots. Yeah. You really you you have a, you have the attire of a fisherman. Yeah. You have fisherman attire. Yes, I, I I don't have the body of a fisherman, but I have the fisherman attire. You have the body of a fish. I do have the bunny. It's very yeah. scaly and smooth and shiny. Yes. You, have, you yeah. breathe out right out of the sides. This show sponsored by BetterHelp. It's very easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you. Babe, but how's your work-life balance is what I want to ask you. It's not the, the best. And, okay. and, and the old, well, it wasn't the best. But then it got better when I signed on with BetterHelp because they just have the – you take this quiz – you know, this little questionnaire form, and they match you up with a licensed therapist that is tailored for you, that helps you. You can change the therapist at any time if you don't like them. you got to think about that. Like, i got to think about – reflect on how much time – you spend on yourself in a given week, and if it's not enough, you need to make a change. You need to make a change, and then you do this all from the comfort of your own home. You know, it's all done entirely entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. And right now, if you go to BetterHelp.com, that's H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash Hey Babe, you're going to get 10% off your first month. Babe, butcher box. Uh, you know what? The I meat in the box, the meat in my mouth. That's what I like. I love butcher box. I use butcher box religiously ever since they have come on to this podcast. Same I with me. Them. I have butcher box high quality meats in my freezer right now. July 4th, having a big barbecue. All the meat from butcher box because they, first of all, what they do is they send you a box of all different meats. You got right. everything, they got 100% grass fed beef. Free-range organic chicken, 
pork raised crate free, wild caught seafood. They got the best high quality meats. Everything's humanely raised is the thing. Everything. No antibiotics, no added hormones. It's delivered right to your doorstep. It's, beautiful. it's always free shipping. Yeah. You can curate your own box or pick from their box that you could pause or cancel anytime. It is the best. You don't have to worry about meat shopping nope. when you go to the grocery Sign store. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash hey babe. Use the code hey babe to get flank steak for free in every box for three months plus twenty dollars off your first order. Butcher Special box. deal they're giving us butcher box. I like that. Butcherbox.com slash hey babe. Use the code hey babe to claim this deal. It's a great deal. Uh, what do you think about those fishermen like over in like, you know, in, in Asia that spear fish and like Can't live, do live off the freshly caught fish every day and they're like they live to like one hundred and fifty years old. I think I think because they don't have uh they, there's no chemicals in the fish there. I think they're. I th I will say one thousand percent. And I don't know if they're tracking it. They get ten thousand steps a day. They probably get ten thousand. But they steps. don't even track. They, they don't even probably have a Fitbit. Do you think that you could spear a fish? No. Never. No. I don't think I would. I think what would most likely happen is I'd throw that spear and I'd spear my own foot. Yeah, you absolutely. Heard I'd spear myself yeah. to the ocean floor, yeah. just like the Titanic thing. Well, me and you go on a helicopter tour. And uh, there's some issues, and it lands in the middle of a, a, a valley. Okay. Okay. And then the guy says, I'll be back. You guys stay here. I'll be back. I'll get help. And then me and you are there for a couple of days, and we realize, oh, my God, we're going to have to like live off the land like Bear grills. Right. How... How are we eating first? I kill you immediately. You kill me. Kill you immediately, <laughs> and, I, and I make a fire, and I start with the calves. <laughs> Your immediate thing is cannibalism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I have, go right we, to it. Do we go fish first? Are we hunting an animal? I mean, let's just say we, I could, go let's fish. Say we have a lighter. Like right, and we can and we can cook something. Like where what, where is our first food coming from? Me and you. Over? I think I'm gonna my first attempt is gonna be the fish because the fish I, a fish is almost an animal that doesn't even it's not even alive to me even yeah. when it is alive. Like I'm almost <laughs> like I could fish cut get a raw deal. Bro. I could cut it open and eat it while it's looking at me because yeah. I'm almost like it doesn't have a soul. It's not because it's so <laughs> opposite of what I live like. Yeah, where and they don't have souls. Fish. I don't think. What has a soul? Animals do you have souls? I think animals Mammals? have souls. Mammals, but not fish. You think it, it souls? So there's a soul in, that, in a mammal. In a kangaroo is that a mammal? Yeah, kangaroo. it's a marsupial. A marsupial. Okay, a, a hippo is that a mammal? I don't know what a hippo is. Ah, a woman. Let's say uh, this philosopher is saying even plants have souls. Well, well then that makes it. Then what are you supposed to eat? You think you can get reincarnated as a plant? You can. You can't. Well, you can. You can, you can I have to my friend. a plant right now. No, no. You can, you can get put into compost and and be grown as a plant. Now that's you awesome. Can, you can get uh, when you pass. You can choose to be put into like a mulch. What would you choose? Do you want to do that? I I only heard about it for the first time about a week ago or two. And I thought like, wow, that's insane. I want them to make me into like plaster. <laughs> and then like construct a house come, with me. You, you want to yeah. come back as like a recite, like a water bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause more harm than good. Human composting. Well, that's what it's gotten to, I think, because you know, recompost the first human composting. Recompose, which is clever. So yes, recompose. I like it. The first human like composting it. funeral home in the U.S. is now open for business. Wow, See? that's that's wild. No, that's Casey Jost. There he is. <laughs> Um, you go in that thing and there's a process, and then you come out, and then they plant. You get planted in the yard. Not and then for you, you grow though. Up as a tree. Not for you. I've only just come around to cremation recently myself. But uh, what was I getting at? We were talking what about we were fish saying? and oh, animals. Fishers. Yeah. Okay. That, about so, having souls. So yeah. So you don't think fish have? Do fish feel pain? I can't imagine they do, but I know science is going to tell me that they do. But I can't see how, how it's do possible. We no. Know if, if I mean, I guess they don't have brains. They have a central nervous system and no brains. Like, what animals that don't have brains? Fish don't have a brain, right? No. So, are you telling me that a fish is operating solely, solely on biological yeah. instinct? Yep. So there's no, there's nothing more than just like biology going on, than just instinctual, like like like. There's nothing going on in a fish other than. Yeah. Instinctively eating and instinctively swimming. Yeah. And, and instinctively avoiding things that are going to prey. Yeah. That's most animals. They're not doing anything but going off their instinct. Neurobiologists have long recognized that fish have nervous systems that comprehend and respond to pain. 
fish like higher vertebrates I don't have it. neurotransmitters such as endorphins that relieve that relieve suffering. The only reason for their nervous system to produce these painkillers is to alleviate pain. That yeah, sucks. I don't think so. I just don't think I don't I I don't believe it. I I don't I don't think that they feel anything. Look at them when they're being killed or when they're out in the their eyes don't move. They don't blink. I don't think their eyes move though as as just in normal times. If you can't blink, you don't have a soul. That's what I'll say. Yeah. If you don't blink, you don't have a soul. I mean, a fish man is either the, the one of the blind people greatest. don't have souls. A fish is not a good life, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Could you spear a blind person? That I could do. Yeah. Um no, I'm kidding. Um, I, I do. Would you, could we catch a fish with our hands and hit it with a rock? Yeah, I think we'd hit like start a fire. Well, no, 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 with a no. Lighter and no, then... I'd catch the fish with our. No, if you catch the fish with the hands, just let it on the floor. Don't let it get back to the water. It'll die. Yeah, but that's runs out of also, O2. When do we? When did we? I know, man. I just we really are numb to that. Like fishermen will come take a just throw it on the thing, and the thing's like. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, fucked up. And to all of his friends, he's like, Jesus Christ, he's suffocating. Yeah. Somebody do something. Yeah. And we just do it like it's nothing. I know today there was a worm uh, in my uh, living room. There was like, you know, it's like a grass back there. There was a worm. And I like gently like took it on like a piece of paper towel. And I went and then I so delicate. And I was like, well, I'm doing such a good deed. And then, you know, I'm stand whatever, six feet. I, I had the paper towel here and I went like that and shook it off. And it, I watched it land on the floor outside of my house and not move at all. I because I dropped it from what would be the equivalent of like the Empire right, State right. Building, right. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't even think of it. I didn't even think of it. Uh, and it was dead on the floor. So? It was didn't move for about you, five minutes. Do you not kill bugs? Like do you like? Don't I try kill not it, don't to kill it. I try not to kill Ants, any of the bugs. Like stuff like that. There's yeah. bugs I will kill immediately. Yeah. What are they? And there's bugs I. I why do ladybugs get such a pass? Because they. It's get, just PR. PR and I, yeah, it's all PR. It's 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 the movie. They you know they they polka dots. It's red polka yes, dots. Yes, the name. Cutesy. I'll tell you what. I'll kill immediately. Roach. I'll, Done. Roach. I'll kill a roach and its family. I'll Done. kill a roach in front of its family. Yeah. And then tell the family, I'm saving you. Go tell the others. I'll kill the roaches. I don't play games with roaches. Play games. I don't kill spiders. I don't kill ants. I kill, I'll kill. i kill a mouse. I don't... No, I can't kill a mouse. Did you guys see the ladybug found in a colonoscopy? What? <laughs> How is that, is that possible? Are you showing me a ladybug resting on someone's... Not Colon? in someone's anus. They got into. The, they got. Yes. They. They. How do you get in past they that? They burrowed through their anus. No. They How do you to. not feel a ladybug burrowing through your anus? Bubbas, also, I don't know. Anuses don't really have openings. How's that ladybug getting in? I don't know how the hell that ladybug's getting in. The old-fashioned way. You imagine you're a ladybug and you've been living your ladybug life, and then you find yourself in someone's ass. In a 59-year-old man's ass. The details just keep coming in. <laughs> and then that is alive? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and so that bug's family is like, we don't know. They don't even know his fate. And they don't know that he's in an animal dead somewhere, like dying to. I kill a, what else you kill on site? A wasp, maybe? I try, well, I'm, I'm afraid that I'd exacerbate its, you know, I'm afraid that I would piss it off. But like, uh, if it lands right here, and it's like just chilling. I'm gonna kill it because I'm not gonna get stung. No. Who else are you killing? Um, on site. I always wanted to do that to someone. Be like, yo, on site, bro. On site. On site. On site. So t I'm talking to the bugs right now. The bugs I would kill on site. On site. Um, uh, uh, a beetle. Ooh, I'd yeah. kill a beetle. They're in the cockroach family. I'd kill it. Yeah, beetles are. No thanks. They don't. They're not. In any way warm, I feel like they burrow into your skin or something. I don't need shit. it. They're hard. I don't need a beetle. Yeah, they yeah, the beetles. Yeah. I don't like them. Um I don't like Grasshopper I'm all right with. Do you know that praying the, mantis. did you know did we talk about this that the Beatles is a play on beat, the word beat, B E A T, isn't it? Right? So they're the beat, like the beat. Right, not the B E E T L E S. Right, but I, I never really, it ran over across my mind, but they spell it with an A, and I think that they just mean like, yeah. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't, uh, the Beatles are one band. Inspired by the, the contemporary band named the Crickets. So they, they, they were like, oh, let's, we, we do beats because it's music. Now let's like just, it's a pun. Right. It's a corny ass pun. Right. And it's the, the most famous band to ever. 
Do you know a lot of Beatles songs? Probably all of them. Yeah. I'm guessing then, just I'll volley it back to you. I'm guessing how many Beatles <laughs> songs do you think you the know? The only one that I know for sure no, is the no, Beatles. No. I swear to God. No, 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 no. You know, I'm going on record and say you know 20 Beatles songs at least. The only one I know for absolute sure is Let It Go. The other ones, I... I let you, It Be. Let It Be. <laughs> yeah. Let It Go is from Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Let it go. Let, let it, it go. go. Let it be. Let right. it be is the only one that I know. You're crazy. I know that there's an I'll album called. Yeah. We sang Hey Jude. But hey, how does Hey Jude go? Hey Jude, don't be afraid. Take a sad song. Yes. Okay. Yes. That that I know. You know we all live in a yellow submarine. I know that there's an album. You probably yellow don't know like submarine. something like a paperback ride. You you probably you you know what? Twist and Shout. Hey, twist it. Shake it up, baby, baby. now. Shake, Shake it up, baby. That's the Beatles? Twist and shout. Yeah. Okay, so that one I know for sure. Yeah, you know all the oldies, right? And I saw her standing in there. when she was just 17. What? Yes. <laughs> yes, that one I know. And you know what, what I, I mean. mean. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> 17, yikes. Help. I need somebody. Help. Not just anybody. Hey, help me if you can. I'm feeling that. Uh, okay, so you know when I know a lot you of know these. You know the old. Yeah, but I know them from commercials. They're big Beatles songs. Sure. Are big on commercials. Sure. Wow. Uh, yesterday, love was such an easy game to play. Yes, that one I know. All my trouble. Right. See, I just didn't know that these were the Beatles. Right. I'm telling you this. Happiness is a warm gun. I want to hold your hand. Hey, that one I know. All right. How, you know happiness is a warm now you won't know happiness is a warm gun. But you, you know, know that know one. Black, you know Blackbird. Blackbird singing in the dead Devil's of night. night. That one I know. All right. Uh, let's keep it going. When I'm, will you still need me? Will you still need me? When I'm 64. That one I don't know. Really? No. Uh, can't buy me love. Yes. I mean, that one. That one, that one I know. So you know. You know. Okay. Songs. Yeah. All right. So these, some of these I know. But you know all the old ones. I'm trying to like see like like a little bit later, like the like the white album. Fixing or a like hole the, is one of is a name of a song. Fixing a hole, I'm not sure I know. But you know probably all of uh Sergeant Pe Sergeant Pepper. With Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. That one I, I don't know. You, no? <laughs> I've heard of Sergeant Pepper's. All right, all right, all right. Uh Abby Rowe. I mean, all right, all right. Anyway, yeah. do bugs. the Beatles do they do any do they do any more like uh well this guy on all the way on the left looks like Mike Feeney. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Do they do they are all of them dead besides McCartney? Yes. They're all dead. He's the last one. No, no, no. Well, no, Ringo is alive. But we'll but, but um George Harrison and uh uh uh, John Lennon. John Lennon. But will McCartney and Ringo ever do a? I don't know. I saw McCartney play the Barclays. When it was uh, about five, six years. Did he ago. do Hey Jude? He did everything. He played for like three hours. I cried three times. He did all the Beatles songs. <laughs> I did. What, Dude, what made you? Cry? It, it was. It was just unbelievable to hear that <laughs> those songs coming from him. Like they're attached to moments and world events and all that stuff. It's just wild to be like in this moment in time. I am hearing this guy sing this song that has affected every person on the plane. Like you know. Did they have like holograms and stuff of John Lennon? They didn't. But hopefully one day. Do you, Do you cry at a lot of concerts? Which concert? How many times have you cried at concerts? Probably plenty. <laughs> really? D depending on a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> depending on the act or the song, I might not cry the whole concert, but I might cry for one song. Like I'll get goosebumps. I won't cry though. Cry well. Celebratory cry. Well, well, seeing him was very moving. And then he sings. You sing something like yes, like let it be, like you know. You sing those songs. That and it's just like it kind of resonates with you. I don't think I was like weeping, but I just mean like I welled up and a tear fell. Like, will you cry at art? At art? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, like, will you just physical be art? Yeah. Like in the nah, Museum of Natural I History? I, get, what's, I don't think I could be taking that like that. I don't think I'll cry at art per se, unless it's imagery, like moving imagery. Like if it's something that like I don't know, have I ever cried at art? I'll tell you, I cried after the movie Boyhood. Is that the one with the same actor for 20 years? Yeah. Why'd you cry at that? It was it, so moving. 
Right. It just was. It was very like. It was to watch that movie. It 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 just captured something that I think another movie's ever captured. It was so. It just was so real. I was on a flight once with Ethan Hawke. I was sitting right behind him. Yeah. And we were going from New York to L.A. And that, that was on like a Monday. And then seven days later, I was on a flight sitting right in front of Ethan Hawke going from L.A. back to New York. No way. Yeah. And when we got, we we're getting off the plane, I said to him, I said, oh, I was on the flight with you out here. And I'm on the flight with you coming back. And he goes, what a world. No way. I swear to God, that's what he said. He no, goes, what a world. And then we got off the flight. Like, like, was he saying well, He it, wasn't being a dick, was really. Was he saying it facetiously or being a dick? I don't know. He just said, what a world. I was on an elevator. That was his comment back. I, I, I didn't mind it. elevator with him one time, and I was there was like eight people on the elevator, but I was with the seven. You know, like, so it was like him and like maybe one other guy and everybody on the elevator I was with. And then, we, so we were talking, and he was standing on the corner, and then while we were talking, someone goes, oh my God, is that Ethan Hawke? And like they said it low, but we were in the elevator. And then the elevator opened. He's like, "Yes, it is," and he just walked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I, I think he's. I'm a big fan. Yeah, I like this guy. Have you ever cried at like art or a movie or a piece of media? Um, um I cried. At <laughs> I cried at Captain I, Phillips for I some reason. Really? <laughs> I don't know oh, why. Oh, movies? Yeah. Dude, I cry at commercials. That is nothing. <laughs> That's nothing. Literally nothing. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> You know, you can't. I can't watch Undercover Boss. I can't watch. Uh, oh, it's so touching. Uh, the, when the when the guy used to yell to move the bus out of the way, and they give give a house. Oh to yeah, yeah, yeah. I would cry at that instantly. Um, I cry at. Uh, I, I I one time I cried at a Queer Eye episode. You did? Yeah, it was very it was very nice. You had a little the, Queer Eye, the man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I I cried at I cried at I cried at uh, <laughs> I cried at uh, Boys to Men. Um, Boys to Men. Boys concert. to Men. <laughs> I cried at a Boys to Men in Vegas. Okay, the end of the road. The yeah, end of the road. But then they sing one about their moms. Oh, mama, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that got me. Yeah. I might have been like, I might have had like a cocktail or whatever. But right. I, I don't know. Maybe I didn't. But I knew I was gonna cry for mama, the one with the mama. Right. And, and as soon as they said mama, I just started crying. Started crying. Yeah. yeah. The no, last, not, probably not end of the road, unless I really let myself go start thinking about shit. But mama, lights Done. out. Done. The last time I think I cried like that in public was when um, I went to the New York football club, like the soccer team that played at Yankee Stadium. Bernie Williams, who was my favorite baseball player, played the national anthem with his guitar, and I started to cry. I started to like start to I started to like well up because I was like I'm, I can't believe I'm watching him it's, it, it, play the national anthem. And then I met him, and then I met him like in the third or fourth inning, and you know he went back he went into his suite after like they. You know, I, I met him and I started hysterical crying into Jasmine's chest, <laughs> like uh, on the concourse at Yankee Stadium. Okay, because you met someone that you admired so much that I that I had a connection to from my childhood. Yeah, that's, I, it, it happens. Yeah. I, so this last weekend we were on the road and I think I was in, I forget where I was in, maybe maybe in KC. It was, uh, and uh, we call I call this this eleven year old kid. I called him on stage. He was couldn't stop crying. Like I, it's, that happens sometimes when we meet people. And I'm just like, you don't really need to cry. Like I'm literally not worth crying over at all. I'm like most normal person, there's nothing special really here. I appreciate you crying. I try to make them not cry. I cried at the, this is embarrassing. I cried at the, <laughs> this is very embarrassing. It was 20 years ago. Okay. It was exactly 20 years ago. I went out to LA to perform with like Improv Olympic or something like that. And I, I told you the story and I might have mentioned this. So I went, I was with Gatto and my buddy Brian Lynch, he's a screenwriter. We go, we go to this place, the Velvet Margarita for a drink. Uh, Joe tells me the last time, the last two times I was here, I saw Vince Vaughn. Now, in 2003, <laughs> Joe and I were writing screenplays and we were trying to like get, make movies and stuff. Um, and so I was very into that world. And a movie that affected me, among others, pretty deeply, but just because it was like it felt attainable was Swingers. It came out in 96. Yep. They did it on a shoestring budget, they did it in LA with friends, local places. It just connected with me at that yeah, time. I had yeah. just recently went through like a very bad breakup, and that's what he was doing in the movie. The scene they hung out at was kind of like the scene that I hung out at that time. It just resonated with me. So uh, I was in that. Sure enough, we go there, and the guy walks in. Vince Vaughn walks in with John Favreau, Ron Livingston, and like wow. ten other people for Vince Vaughn's thirty fifth birthday at the time. It was. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's Fabs. I, I told you the story. But anyway, I didn't know what to do. I had no money. And I sent over. I, I told Vince. I sent over, happy birthday. I want to get you a drink for everyone at your table. I was going to max my credit card out. I had no money. And uh, he said, I can't, I can't accept that. It's so sweet of you. I can't accept that. But please allow me to buy 
you a drink. And so I was like, I felt weird, but I was like, all right. My friend's like, get the drink and just toast them or something. So I got like a kettle and soda and I raised it up and they all raised their glasses. I said, thanks so much. That's awesome. I did the drink. I have the glass. I saved it. Wow. I stole it. Yeah, it's in my kitchen right now. But, and then at the end, they all stood up and I was like, I'm not going to bother them. But when they stood up, we were kind of leaving and then like they made eye contact and then I started just talking to John Favreau at the other table and he started, he started an improv. He starts talking to me about that and we start talking a little bit. He's being very polite, generous, talking to me for two, like three or four minutes and then I left and when I left, I went out to to call my girlfriend to tell her what just happened. And I, as I was telling her, I got emotional and cried. Yeah. Because at that time, he, I looked, just looked up to him so, so much. Like, Do you know him now? Have you met him through the I stuff? Don't, I know Vince now. Yeah. And I never told Vince that story. You should tell him that's Well, he's listening. I felt weird about it. And we know that he's listening. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he, yeah, I should tell him about it. He is good friends with Peter Billingsley. Peter Billingsley yes. played Ralphie in A Christmas yep. Story, among many things since then. But they, they had their production company together. He's one of Vince's right-hand guys. Yeah. And Vince used to do the Wild West Comedy Festival in Nashville for like four or five years straight. And I was a part of it every single year. They invited us back. So I got to know them. And Peter Billingsley, oddly enough, is in my other... I mean, Swingers and like his favorite movies like is in the top five for me. And so is I think Christmas Story is my favorite movie of all time. And I've never I've known Peter Billingsley now for almost 10 years and I've never told him that either. I just tell him. I don't know. They probably hear it all the time. I didn't want to like I didn't want to be that person. So I just kind of got to know them as is. Yeah. Give people their flowers, man. Exactly. Yeah. I've I've uh, I've never seen Christmas Story. uh, That is my that is my Snapple up there. It filled with water. Anyway, sorry, ADHD. You've never seen a Christmas story? Never seen a Christmas they story. They play it 24 hours straight every year for never the last seen 25 it once. years. Never seen it once. You've never turned on the television? At never seen a Christmas story. You don't know anything about it? Zero. Wow, bud. I got to tell you, it's fantastic. I'm going home. I'm going to listen to the Beatles and watch a Christmas story in July. Yeah, I'm telling you, dude. It's real. What, what's your favorite Christmas movie? Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Okay, it's, that's, that's okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't shit on you for that. All right. Not Home Alone? Oh, yeah, Home Alone. Home Alone 2, though, more than one. No, no. I, I love He's everything in New cute. York. It was a carbon copy. I love I love Christmas in New York. I love the fact that it was in New York, but it was it, it, it was just something. It just was trying to copy. It was what's the you, same exact movie. What's your favorite Woody Allen movie? Uh, what's one I got to watch? What's next in the list for me? If, I'm, if I watch five in a row, what's next? I would, I would really tell you to watch Annie Hall. Yeah, yeah. It's I, it held holds up, and it was like ahead of its time. It's funny. Yeah, the conceit in the movie is like um, it's him and Diane Keaton, and you know it's it's a it's a romantic comedy, but like he the whole movie, you hear his thoughts, and you hear everyone's you hear her and his thoughts. So he'll say something, and then you'll hear like what he's thinking. And that, that I don't know if that device was used prior to that. Got it. I've seen it since. Well, then. that's why I like the concepts of it. Like that's why I like Midnight in Paris. You ever yeah, seen Midnight in I Paris? I see it, but is he? He's also Manhattan Murder Mystery, right? Uh, that I, I think know. that was a good one too. I like. But Midnight in Paris, I like because it's like you know, it's like that whole idea of nostalgia, yeah. where like you you know think like you're like oh man i wish i could go back to new york in the 90s and yeah. then you go back there and you realize that the people in the 90s wanted to go back they were like things were so much better in the 50s yeah. and that's what the movie is it's like they go back 100 years in paris and then the people 100 years ago in paris oh, like, after he gets to know them are like yeah but you know things were good in the 1700s oh, wow. and it like keeps going and it's like it's kind how of we feel to this day it's kind of like an idea of like you're you just got to be happy with your present, mm-hmm. be, be friendly with your present because it's like it, you're always going to want to go back in time. Nost- our brains go into this nostalgic mode. Yeah, that's I what guess they it's do. safer. Th- I, I would like to see that. Do you know that he? I don't know if he still does. He played every single week for like thirty years. He played jazz clarinet uptown. What? Yeah, every week you just go see him play jazz clarinet. He played every when he was as famous as Woody Allen. As, he. For the last 30 years. He, he still does still it. He might still be doing it. Can you throw that in, babe? See, Woody Allen Bananas. is playing the jazz clarinet. Jazz clarinet uptown. I don't know how to play one instrument. He had like a residency. Interesting. An evening with Woody. Yeah, but he did it every week for a very long time. Interesting. Where did Woody Allen play the clarinet in New York City? Oh, at the Carlisle. Yep, that's it. The Carlisle Hotel. That's uptown. Yeah, yeah. The Carlisle. You've been in that hotel ever? Um, once. Nice. Fun. Nice. It's a nice place. I don't know many New York hotels. I know. I know a 
I know of a couple of uh, f- a friend. I can't name say it on air, but f- yeah, I can't say it. I'll Beyonce. Tell you, I'll, tell you Beyonce. Off, I'll tell you off air. Bullets Over Broadway was fun. Jennifer Tilly. Love you know Jennifer Tilly. JT. Uh, yeah. The real JT. What, what was that movie she was in with like Gina Gershon where they tied each other up and shit? Wasn't it like a real, a real sultry humdinger? Oh, Bullets Over Broadway. Bound, Chaz is in Bound, that. maybe? Bound, maybe. Is that uh, Woody Allen? Yeah, Bullets Over Broadway. No, I know that, but the one Bound that he sang. Uh, Bound. That's the name of it. I just remember And it's it. a Woody Allen movie. I don't know if it's a Woody Allen, but them two right there, they get hot and heavy and fast and loose. Love it. Lesbians. And this so has been Hey Babe. <laughs> oh, we, oh, yeah. Oh, we yeah, yeah. Oh, we yeah, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe.